Open your Bibles, if you would, this morning to Luke in the 11th chapter. As I had privilege this morning to come sit in the Sunday school, I realized that God is speaking to us in like manner. And we need to understand what's going on in this world. If we allow it, <laughs> the events in this world, the currents, the callings of the world will drag you away. But if you have the Holy Spirit, and you've got Jesus, who, by the way, is an anchor for your soul. The wind of the world can blow, but you'll stand firm. We could preach this morning on building your house on solid ground. Because on Christ's <laughs> solid rock I stand, all other ground is... Well, that's not what we're preaching about today, although it certainly relates. There is something in our lives that is, that is absolutely paramount that you need to realize. I realize, according to Scripture, that on the moment that you were saved, you got the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, hey, I got that. And I'm encouraged by that. But there's more to him than that. Have you ever seen that? There always seems to be more. There always seems to be more that God uh, has for you and also that God expects for you. And whom, <laughs> whom, uh, whom is forgiven more uh, is certainly grateful more, but whom receives more, more is required of them. And we ask so much of God that there's one thing I think we lack. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, by faith in the Lord Jesus. Your Holy Spirit has made us alive in him. Thank you for that spirit. And thank you for placing me in to the family of God in the body of Christ, which is the church. I thank you that he has set his seal of ownership upon me. And he's taken up residence within my heart. So as to give me power, to empower me in my spiritual walk. And I thank you, Lord, how it is that you gradually lead me in transforming me into the lovely likeness of your son, Jesus. That I would be more like Christ tomorrow than I was even today. We ask this in Jesus' name. <clears throat> I wanted to share, and I will be sharing some prayer today in regards to this. And in this particular scripture, in, uh, in Luke chapter 11, there is something that's going on here that's very important. It's one of the things, the only things that the disciples ask Jesus to teach them. And it's important for us to understand what this is about. And, and, and here's the deal of, uh, in regards to what we're here for. Why is the church here? Knowing who you are, knowing where you stand, knowing what to do. Because it's important for you to find your place in the house of God. And God's kind of particular. But in his means of being particular, he's kind of peculiar. Look at your neighbor and, and realize God called him or her to be here today. And, and God is saying, uh, you're my precious possession. Now you might look in the mirror and say, precious, me, moi, this, this person? 
I'm precious. And some of us, we get caught up in the song because red and yellow, black and white, they're all precious in his sight. But can I tell you that there's another level of peculiarity or preciousness. Quite often in memorial services at funerals, I quote the verse, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his saints. But what about ones that aren't his saints? To be clear, he gets no pleasure in their death. And he really doesn't give pleasure in our death except for one thing. Those who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus are coming home. Precious in the sight of the Lord. My son, my daughter, they're just coming home. <laughs> the church is here and been, and been equipped and, and gifted for a reason. And you're here this morning, and there are many who won't come and don't come because they think, well, okay, I know enough about Jesus to get me to heaven. And uh, the problem with all that is, is they don't because I don't know all that there is to know. Every time I, that, that, listen, every time a new life, leaf in my life is turned over, there's another point I missed. There's another truth I missed. There's another promise. I'm going to get me that one because I didn't know that it was even there. In one sense, I've got to tell you, I kind of enjoy how God works. He doesn't lay it out all plain in front of you. But he does give you enough clues that you can find what you're looking for. The problem is many times we don't know what we're seeking. We don't know what we're searching for. And sometimes we're knocking and we're seeking and we're asking. Right? We knock, we seek, we ask, and we're still not getting it. And we realize one day, at least I have, and I've realized it again, I've been reminded again. Don't think ill of me when I tell you I was in the office yesterday and I realized either I don't know or I never knew or I don't know how to pray. What? How, how can a pastor not know how to pray? It's not that I didn't know. It's that I've been knocking, seeking, and asking and perhaps maybe that today is God was speaking to me. Here's the deal. I'm going to preach to you what the Lord has been telling me. I'm going to preach to you what God is working in my life right now. You need to learn to do the same. When you're witnessing to your neighbors. Listen, if you're still caught up in gambling, if you're still caught up in drugs, if you're still caught up in carousing, if you're still caught up in the things of the world, you might not even want to try to preach anything to somebody. Until you allow the Holy Spirit now, just to be clear, these things are not necessarily indications that you're not being transformed. Remember, it's, a, it's kind of a step-by-step -step process. I don't know anybody yet, I've never met anybody who was fully transformed and their life was, was absolutely reconciled, perfect, and, every, and, and, and you know, in the sight of God and man, and that they were perfect from the altar. They received Jesus and everything just got this perfect, right? No. Even Jesus himself, think about this. Uh, Jesus himself, when they called him good, he said, listen, why do, you call, why do you call me good? There's none good, no, not one. He's talking about being flesh and blood, being a man. There's none good except the only one who's perfect is God. And what if I told you that part of the reason the church is here is to help you in your progress of becoming perfect? can't tell you how many times that people in our own fellowship, in our own church, have said, well, you know, no one can be perfect and no one is good. I said, I understand that. But there's a command that you are to be as he is perfect. He, that the whole goal is to be perfect. In Ephesians chapter, chapter 4, it says this. Here's the thing. He ascended on high to send the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen. amen. And so we go on in uh, chapter 4, verse 11, and it talks about what he sent. What he sends to us, the church. And he himself gave some to be apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. What for? 
Verse 12, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of, for the what? For the edifying of the body of Christ, to build up the body of Christ, the church, till we all come, say all, all. to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of stature and fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, in cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, even Christ. It's in your Bible. I might have said that a little fast. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. But today I want to speak to you from Luke in the 11th chapter. And it begins like this in verse 1. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And so he said to them, when you pray, say this. Church, let's do it. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Going on, it says, and he said to them, listen. Which of you shall have a friend and go to him in the, in the midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has come to me on his journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer. Mm -hmm. He will answer from within, saying, Do not trouble me. The door is now shut. My children are, are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. I say to you, Though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, say persistence. <laughs> if you have an underlined circle, whatever, in your Bible, highlight it. Um, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open for you. For everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be open. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will he give him a serpent instead of fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father Give the Holy Spirit to you who ask for him. Did you catch that? Yes. See, over the last few weeks, we've, we've had a little study. We've talked quite a bit about the Holy Spirit. And we've looked at the commands of God and, and how that God within the, the, the pages of his word tells us what we're supposed to be doing. We know about the commandments. We know about the will, these, thou's, and don'ts, and do's, and all these sort of things. We are instructed to do a couple of things. One thing is, do not grieve the spirit of God in our lives. On a positive side, we are commanded to walk in the spirit and also to pray in the spirit. Now this morning, I want to consider the filling of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is probably one of the most misunderstood ideas concerning the ministry of the Holy Spirit today. Many have placed their own distinctions on what is really being filled with the Spirit and what is not. At the moment of your rebirth, you have the Holy Spirit. Amen? I mean, once again, I want to direct your attention to the Bible for what God has to say concerning this important part of his ministry. In Luke chapter 11, verse 13, I think I've got it up here on the wall. It will be in a moment. There it is. 
In the 13th chapter, or the 11th chapter, verse 13, Jesus is teaching us concerning prayer. Well, go all the way back to the beginning, teach us to pray. And he didn't just teach him a little, you know, 10 or 12 line prayer so we'd have something to pray. He actually told us what to pray for. Did you get that? I mean, he tells us in the latter part of this lesson, as he's teaching the disciples, as I'm preaching to you this morning, <laughs> he, in this verse, our Heavenly Father, he has such a desire to give you something. He wants to give you his spirit. And his spirit is holy. Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. If we would simply ask him, he says, I'll give it to you. If we simply come to him and ask, seek, and knock, a door will be opened. The prayer, did you hear what, he, what he's willing to do? Absolutely, and it is, it's important because absolutely nothing, say nothing. Nothing. Nothing can be accomplished for God apart from the power and the work of the Holy Spirit. You can do nothing. Don't listen to what Jesus said. Apart from me, you can do nothing. How many of you know that the Spirit of God is also the Spirit of Christ and apart from Him? There's another application of this we'll go into at another time. But did you know you need to be in the body? You need to be in a local church. Amen? Because apart from Him, His body, you really can't do anything. I mean, even Jesus Christ, when he performed his great mighty works and his acts on the earth, he did this all through the power and the filling of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus defeated Satan, when he was out there in, in the wilderness and he got tempted and everything, he was out there for 40 days, his victory came in the power of the Holy Spirit. In Luke Amen. chapter 4, verse 1, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, said he was full of the Ghost. And he returned from Jordan, and he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. That same Spirit he was filled with was the one that was leading him Amen. to be tempted. Some of you came to Jesus, and you thought that all temptation would be gone. <laughs> he gave you something else to overcome these temptations. Amen? Amen. And, and then after this temptation, the word of God tells us this. And Jesus returned in power of the Spirit to Galilee. So he was led into the wilderness by that same Spirit. And when he came through and he followed, he was obedient to the Spirit. He walked in the Spirit. He performed all of his, everything that he did. He lived in the Spirit because that's what maintained him. Amen. And when he came out of that wilderness... And he came to Galilee. He came to Galilee in power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, listen to this. He wasn't the only one filled with the Spirit. The, how many of you remember David, that king back in the Old Testament? Some of us, we remember the song. And we remember the song that says, Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Don't remove your presence. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. He had the Holy Spirit. Zacharias, Elizabeth, John the Baptist, they were all filled with this Spirit. The disciples, listen, his disciples, the disciples of Christ, not only were they filled with the Spirit, but they were filled again with the Spirit as they went out into their real ministry. So when you really understand what this means, I think you might actually jump in with both feet to do real ministry. Just like the song we just said, you know, the river, <laughs> it's flowing, never slowing. Things happen faster than we think we, and I'm just here to tell you that there are things that's gonna happen faster than you can handle. And the Holy Spirit is there. But here's what we're going to depend on. We're going to depend on each other as well. That she's filled with the Holy Ghost. That he's filled with the Holy Ghost. That he's, uh, when we're all filled. Listen, go back to what we're here for. Till we all come to the unity of faith. The only way this unity can take place is in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the power that's going to bring us together. Apart from me, Jesus says, you can do nothing. Apart from the Holy Spirit, you're never going to grow spiritually. 
We're going, we're, you, you're not, maybe, you, maybe you aren't babes in Christ right now, but most of us today, we still act like adolescents. We always seem to know better than the elders. You ever notice that? At age 16, they know better. Mm -hmm. But by the time they're 25, they realize, oh, mom and dad might know better after all. <laughs> Being filled with the Holy Ghost. Being filled with the Holy Spirit. What is that? Well, the first observation we make here today is that it is a command from God. Did you hear that? It's a command from God. In Ephesians chapter 5, I'm just going to give you this, verse 18. But be filled with the Spirit. Here it comes, how we relate to one another with the Holy Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. And, and here's the thing. You really can't face God without the Holy Spirit. I would be very afraid of that. But there's always going to be this, this sense of, I'm going to say anxiousness or anxiety when you're, you're realizing, wait a minute, this is the Almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth. This is the one who gives and takes away. This is the one who gave me life. We need the Holy Spirit even to be able to submit to one another. And it's a command of God, and there's reason that God commands us of these things. Did you know why, why there are commands in the Bible? I've, I've taught this before, and I'll teach it again today. When you find something that's being commanded of us, it's because that's not something that we are naturally going to do. Did you hear that? We could, we could go on in the scripture here. Hey, wives, submit to your own husbands. Husbands, <laughs> the husband is the head of the wife, so Christ is the head of the church. And he is also the Savior of the body. Therefore, just like the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be subject to their own husbands. Ladies, you need the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Gentlemen. Ladies first, right? right? Husbands, love your wives. Just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water of the word, that he might present her to himself, a glorious church, not having a spot, a wrinkle, or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Wow! That's a tall order. <clears throat> How am I going to get my wife to submit like that? It's not my job. It all comes from the Holy Spirit. You're going to have times, it doesn't matter the relationship, whether husband and wife or just friends. You have to know who you are, where you stand, what to do. And we need to know how to conduct ourselves. Can I tell you, the Holy Spirit will level the playing field. Did, I, did you hear that? Well, how do I know how, it's gonna, how this is supposed to work? Through the Word of God. Well, I don't know about you, Pastor, but I find some of this stuff is hard to understand. And you won't understand this divine text without the Holy Spirit. You want to have proper application? This is not a help, a self-help book. This is a so help me God book. Did you hear that? I mean, even, even when you tell the truth, so help me God. You need help to tell the truth for crying out loud. Would you lift your hand right now and say, Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. Help me to understand what your will is for me in Jesus' name. So the idea here is that this filling of the Spirit is not optional for the believer. God clearly commands us to be filled with the Spirit. We are indwelt by the Spirit of God when we are saved. But God commands us that there's even more. And he commands us to ask for that Spirit. You know, it's something that just didn't happen one day and not another day. One of the things that I've discovered about this uh, in my walk with the Lord is that this is a daily process. It's not an auto magic kind of a thing. It doesn't just happen. Uh, I'm, wait, I'm God's child, so guess what? Everything's got to go my way. <laughs> go my way. 
Well, you gotta, you might want to define what that everything is. Because Jesus said, you're going to have some bad days. But he also said, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. How did he overcome the world? In the power and in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You, to be filled with the Holy Spirit is to be controlled by him. Some of us need to realize this when we realize there are things in our life that is controlling us. People, places, or things can do that. You know, nothing of itself is sin. Someone asked me the other day, Pastor Fields. Yes. <laughs> okay. They didn't call me Brother Tony, call me Pastor Fields. I knew this was going to be a big one. You know, I like to have a good beer with my steak. Am I going to hell because of that? First, my question, my, my, I, I answered the question with an answer. Well, with a question. My question was, um, if you're concerned about it, you might want to think about it. <laughs> but what, now here's what I said to him, though. Another question. What does the scripture say? What does the scripture say? If you don't have that beer or you don't have that wine or whatever it happens to be, whatever your vice happens to be, wait, is it a vice? Is it something that you're caught in? Is it something that you can't let go of? Is it something that if the Lord's pricking your conscience to say you need to stop it, but you just can't? You might want to ask help from the Holy Spirit. I'm, maybe I'm oversimplifying this, but let me tell you, here's the idea here. It, in, in the new, there's, there's, there's two things. In the Old Testament, we find uh, this, this thing called repentance is basically a turning away from the things that we were doing. You know, turn away from sin. But what we see in the New Testament is it's changing your mind. But when you put the two together, what did we learn yesterday? Uh, what, one of the things we learned is it's a change of will. It's one thing if I change your mind. It's another thing if... Through the Holy Spirit, I can inspire you to change your will. Where there's a will, there's a way. And if we can change your will, I'm, I'm reminded of uh, my pastor from years ago who said that when he got born again, when he got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, he could do whatever he wanted to do. And what basically comes, that means he could, whatever, whatever he would like to do, he could do it. But here's the thing, he said, but it changed his want to. He didn't want to do things anymore. He didn't want to partake in different things anymore. So the idea is we have to yield ourselves unto him and allow him to be in control. I mean, remember what I'm telling you right now. God wants us to ask. And the reason he's saying, he, listen, it's a command for us to ask because he'll give it. But in, in one sense... When he gives it to you, it's going to change your will. Ask and you'll receive it. Why are we not asking more often? Is it because we want to maintain our own control? You want to be your own man. You want to be your own woman. You want to be your own person. You're seeking yourself. I looked for myself for a long time and I never found the real me until I found Jesus. And then I said, oh, me. So it's something that God commands us to do. And it's also something that we should be the normal state of the believer. There are two things that, that happen every day in my prayer life. And um, one of them is, of course, asking for forgiveness of sin every day. Maybe several times throughout the day. I say, wow, what's your problem, Pastor? You got, you got sin issues? Every one of us do. If you say you're without sin, you're a liar. And the truth I in you. Um, and sometimes I, don't, I might not even know what that is until I pray the next prayer for the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit shows up and he's the spirit of truth. Oh, here's the thing. He's the spirit of truth. Jesus is the truth. He's the spirit of truth. Did you, you can have that for free. Uh, understand the spirit of truth. When he comes, he'll convict you of your sin. Oh, my goodness. 
See, the idea is that this should be a normal state for every one of us, but most of us, we're praying for other things. You're not praying for the Holy Spirit. You're praying for a problem to be solved. You're praying for something else to be done away with, or maybe something else to be delivered. Maybe you're having some other problems. Maybe it's relational. Maybe it's financial. Maybe it's health problems. You're praying for all these things, and rarely are we praying for the Holy Spirit. Unfortunately, it's not the case for most believers. We don't pray for him as often as we ought to. Many believers live out their lives in the power of their flesh rather than the power of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because there are things the flesh wants to do and the Holy Spirit makes you feel uncomfortable. See, this is not just about a choice. This is actually out of necessity. We need the Holy Spirit so desperately. We need a Holy Ghost movement. We need the power of God to flow through our, our churches and through our families and through our lives. And God intends for every believer to live a victorious life. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. He wants you to be victorious in every way. But you can't live victorious through your own power, by your flesh. The victorious life for him only comes through the power of the Spirit of God. You know, if your life has been filled with trouble and trials and tribulations and defeats, just to be clear, just because you're going through some tough times, that doesn't mean you don't have the Holy Spirit. Oh, come on. But if, if you find your life is filled with defeat after defeat after defeat, it ain't God's fault. He has given us what we need to live an abundant life. You know, after, after the fact you receive power to be a witness to God, how are, how are you living your life to be that witness? It's not God's fault when we suffer defeats. Someone said to me the other day, well, Pastor, I'm, I'm, I'm having this trial. I've asked God to remove this from me for so long, and he just hasn't removed it. And a thought came to me, kind of like with the Apostle Paul. He had a thorn in the flesh. Do you remember the story? And it might be that God is allowing you to stay in this, in this state of tension so you don't get lazy. It might be that you're asking him to change your situation, but he's trying to allow your situation to change you. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in need of prayer. Amen. So what are the results? Tell him what he's won, Tony. <laughs> Pastor, tell him what he's won. First off, it's not... A competition. It's just something we've been promised. This 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 gift we're talking about is the, is another gift of grace. Amen. You receive salvation not because of anything that you did. It's a gift of God. Lest anyone should boast. And some of us, you get the Holy Spirit and you want to brag about it. Stop. You don't have boasting rights. You didn't go get the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I went right down here to Barney's Market, got me a dose. I'm afraid that's a different spirit. Yeah. <laughs> and what's the scripture say? Do not be drunk. <laughs> and why? What is the benefits? What is the results of being filled with the spirit? Well, first thing that's going to happen, Brother Mike, you can identify with this, and Amanda, and, and anybody else who's a worshiper, there will be a difference in your worship. Ephesians 5. Speaking to one another in spiritual hymns, songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always, all that. there will be a change in your worship. Worship, worship is a spontaneous of 
being filled with the Spirit. I think some of you may have experienced a little bit of that today as we were singing praises to God and the music was going on. The Holy Spirit came upon you and, and I just, let me tell you, how do I know? You got loud. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Suddenly it went from just, Jesus, I shall. And no, wait, suddenly you started making a joyful noise. You started shouting. The Holy Spirit comes upon you, you've got the shout. That is the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. When you start worshiping, you, you, it's not because you have triumphed, it's because the Holy Spirit is giving you victory, which makes you triumphant, by the way. Amen. This means that the Spirit-filled believer will have a desire to come and to worship the Lord. A Spirit-filled believer will have a desire to be in fellowship as often as they can with the saints of God and with Him. Amen? <coughs> You know, in our society, it seems that people, they come to church wanting to be entertained rather than wanting to worship. I sure hope that young man hit some good licks on the drums today. I kind of like some, I kind of like some drumming, and I like some strumming, and I like some stroking. So I hope that that lady up there, I hope she plays some nice music today. I hope Brother Mike strums some chords. And I hope James and John both can, can help get, help me keep the rhythm with the bass and the drum going on. Man, it just, it just does me so good. How many of you know the Holy Spirit can make you, make you feel good even if the rhythm is off? Amen. He can make a difference. If Mike was here, he'd say, thank you, Jesus. Because when he, when he drops a note, am I right, James? When he drops a note, he feels it. But none of us do. Why? Because we're in the Spirit. Hello? You see, if we aren't filled with the Spirit, if we aren't filled with the Spirit, these are the things that we'll be looking for. Years ago, uh, Brother T would probably know this. Some of you may have because you've been in the faith long enough. You know, but back maybe 20 years ago, and they're still going on, really, if you think about it. Worship wars. That's what we call the worship wars. Whoever had the best band, whoever had the best program, whoever had the best show. And still today, there's, there's some of that that's kind of levied you know, that, kind of on us. Who's going to preach the best message? Who's going to look the best in church today? Who's going to tell the best story? Who's going to make me feel the best? Because we're all out there looking for a feel-good gospel. Do you know what the feel-good gospel really is? It's not that all your troubles are gone. It's just that now you can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil. Why? Because he's with you. Amen. It's not just about being entertained. It's not just about feeling good. Although I've got to tell you, even when I'm in the darkest of days when the Holy Spirit's on me, I still feel pretty good. Amen. I might not like the circumstance and the situation, but I'm still feeling pretty good about it. Why? Because I fear no evil because he's with me. Hallelujah. So there'll be a difference in your worship. Maybe uh, those of us are still working stiffs. You, know, you go on the job site, you start singing a praise song, and it's like, what in the world? What is God? What's up with you? You can turn to them and say, Jesus. Yeah. And just go on. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. But be careful. Just to, just to forewarn you, you speak the name of Jesus, somebody's going to want to talk to you. And it's not always going to be a conversation you want to have. Yeah. You might feel like you've been put on trial. Tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. <laughs> truth be told, if the spirit of truth is on you, I was watching uh, one of those su the, the superhero programs, and you know, Wonder Woman. Anybody know Wonder Woman? Guys. Uh, <laughs> James. Um, anyway, <laughs> so, um, what was the what was the what was the water guy? Aquaman. Aquaman. So there's this one scene in this one show we're watching, and Aquaman just kind of just spelling it out there how he felt about everything, how he felt about everybody, and he looks over to uh, Flash and uh, and, uh, and and Batman, and they they kind of point, and he realizes he's sitting on this rope. What is the rope that she has? Oh, oh, the truth. <laughs> truth. <laughs> truth be told. 
Some of us, we might need to realize we need to be telling the truth and nothing but the truth. And you're going to need God's help. That's where the Holy Spirit comes in. And let me tell you, this is something else too. So your worship changes, but here's something I think we'll, you'll relate to. Your, there will be a difference in your family. I don't have time to read the whole thing, but read the rest of Ephesians chapter 5. Right there beginning in verse, um, well, I guess we're beginning in verse 21. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. Wives submitting to their husbands, husbands submitting to loving their wives. Um, and I'll be mean, going on and on and on all the way to the end of the book. Well, actually, all the way into, here's one. We don't, we don't have too many in here, but how many of you have ch were children at one time? And you got parents that are still like, listen to this, yeah. Children, obey your parents. <coughs> Hold on. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Uh-oh. Sister Linda, you might be somebody's parent in here, a spiritual parent. As a pastor, I'm a spiritual father. No, don't be calling me. No, but some people call me. I have some friends of mine call me Padre. Um, oh. <laughs> I said, I'll take, I'll take my belt off and show you who's daddy around here. <laughs> no, I'm not taking my belt off because then there'll be a lot of embarrassment. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. You hear in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21 to the to, to actually into chapter 6. No other problem brings more heartache than to have problems at home with family. And as a small church, we are a church family. And then the source of the problems cannot be attributed to just the day and the age in which we live. It's not, well, the, you know, we never had these problems back in the day. Right now, some of you who, who, were, who were a little bit older than me, just a little bit, um, some a lot. <laughs> you was, no, no, we, we had problems just like this back, back then, too. There's nothing new under the sun. These problems that we have in our families today is nothing new. Go all the way back to Genesis. There was still civil rivalry going on. There was bickering and fussing and fighting. So the source of the problems can't be attributed just to the day in which we live. Nor can we blame those other people. You know, the others crowd. Well, they're not us. They're, they're, not, they're not saved. They don't go to church. No, we can't blame them for our problems. Did you hear that? We have to realize that it begins when we fail to yield ourselves to the Spirit of God and allow Him to fill us daily. That's the problem. You see, here's something that the Spirit of God will not do. Wait a minute. Go back to the Lord's Prayer. How does it end? And lead us not? Into temptation. But deliver us from evil. What if I... Listen, listen to this. I'm going to tell you. Now, what if I told you? I'm going to tell you. The Spirit of God will not lead you into sin, but He will deliver you from the evil one, just like He did Jesus in the wilderness. See, when we choose to obey, well, okay, let me go the other way. If we choose to disobey God, when we are controlled, when we are motivated by the flesh, there's going to be trouble. And look, oh my goodness, some of you will appreciate. So there are times when I have to say something to someone and uh, they didn't really care to hear about it. Some will try to We'll try to fire it back on you. Well, like you've never done, wait, like your kids. Anybody have kids that did this? You know, they did something, and yeah, you did it when you were, wait, I bet you did it when you were younger. That's not the point. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do it anymore. Amen? Because I learned my lesson, and I still have lessons to learn, so help me God. I mean, think of, so spirit-filled husbands will love their wives the way they should. Still, for wives will be submissive to their husbands in their leadership, which also puts a, it puts the burden of, of proof on the on the husband to become that spiritual leader. Spirit filled children will be in obedience to their parents, and they will honor them. And then, when you leave the household, some of us still have this to deal with. You'll be different on the job. 
You mill workers, you can have this. <laughs> Truckers, amen? Machinists, electricians. Wait a minute, everybody under the sun who has any kind of a job that they have to do. Jump, look at this, uh, in Ephesians chapter six, verse five. Listen to this. Bond servants, be just, uh, being obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, and fear and, and, and with fear and trembling, in sincerity of heart as to Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he be a slave or free. My goodness, that, that verse beats me up about every day of the week. Every day. How about you guys that are still working stiffs? Did you know that even if you don't have a quote-unquote job, you still have work to do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you need to obey. Obey those who are over you in the Lord especially. But the spirit-filled workman will do his job with all diligence. He's not going to be slothful. He's going to do the very best that he can, do the very best of his, his ability. So help me God. Uh, there's going to be a lot of so help me God's going on in your lives today, isn't there? A spirit-filled man will not be a clock watcher or a man pleaser. I guess in the middle it'd be brown noses, right? No, you're just going to do the best that you can. Because he's going to do his work as if he's doing it unto the Lord, like we find. Do everything wholeheartedly in Colossians. Do everything wholeheartedly as if you're doing it for God, to please God. Do it with all your might. Whatever you put your hand to do, do it. Whatever your heart is set on, do it. But be led by the Holy Spirit while you're doing it. You see, that spirit-filled employer will honor Christ by the way he treats those in his employ as well. Maybe you're a supervisor or you're over other people. Treat them as you'd have want to be treated as a servant. So here's your question. Are you filled with the Spirit? Now, maybe, maybe you still aren't really sure. That's okay. And if, you're, and if you are sure, if you're not sure, did you know you still need to ask? Has anybody in here, anybody, has anybody in here got enough of the Holy Spirit that they don't need anymore? Anybody? No. How many of you need more of Him? Amen. I need more of Him. And if you, if you need more of Him, you can have more. All you have to do is ask. See, not only is it a command of God, but it's a promise. He says, he commands us, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he tells us to ask. Ask our Father in heaven. You being evil, and you still give good gifts, how much more will God give you the Holy Spirit? If you're a child of God, then you ought to be asking him on a regular basis. Hold on, maybe you're too grown up. I don't want to be a bother like you're going to bother God. Little Carly, our youngest granddaughter, is getting into, she's at that age right now where she's starting to want things. And it's usually what you have. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, my, my oldest granddaughter, although she's not real big about it today, I'm kind of, I, I, I'm, I'm grateful. My, my, my kids and grandkids haven't been too greedy for money. Although Autumn, when she was about a year and a half, money, have it. <laughs> Cutest thing you ever did see. And you know what I did? I reached in my pocket, whatever I had, she got it. I was a sucker. And then, but wait a second. What if I told you that God is like that with the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, have it. What if we become like that child? What if we quit acting like we're all grown up and we don't need any more growing up? My mother is my witness. I need to grow up some more. So help me God.
We need spirit-filled worship. We need spirit-filled homes. We need spirit-filled workers in the workplace. We need spirit spirit-filled people with their feet up on the street and out there witnessing for Jesus. But you can't witness with something you haven't got. You can, just to be clear, you can't be hypocritical about it. You can't, you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, does that mean you can't hang out with a crowd that you shouldn't be allowed? Some of us, that's how it was at, but I'm just here. You need to know who you are and where you stand before you go to these places. Do not become like them. Oh, I don't have time for that part of the message. That'll be like the Apostle Paul. You know, he became all things to all people. And some of you have taken it way too far. You start doing the things that they do. But when you read about what, what Paul did, he was became all things to all people. But he did not join in the things that they did. Somebody say amen. amen. I had somebody the other day ask me about uh, going to certain restaurants. And, oh, you know, should, should I even be going there? I said, why? Well, you know, they serve booze. I said, well, you have problems with booze? Well, I used to. Said, well, do you have problems today? No. Couldn't go. And by the way, uh, if, if some of, if some of your, your, your drinking buddies show up, are they going to be able to force a drink on you? Or are you going to have enough willpower? And he thought about it for a moment. He said, I guess I'm going to have to pray more before I go. <laughs> I don't want to uh, take away from this, the spirit of what we're talking about because um, there's a secular song that came to my mind right now. Um, Willpower, it's now or never. This is God. Give your love to me. If you're going to give your love, if you're going to give your obedience, give it to God. God is saying, listen, ask, not seek and ask him. He'll give you the gift of it. To get the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can have the Holy Spirit. You can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'll promise you that none of us are big enough to contain the Holy Spirit. So it's going to be a constant flow, a constant river that never runs dry. Amen. Come on. Well, let me give you these, these, these commands of God. I don't know. Did I put these in the, in the bulletin? Yeah. Grieve not. Quench not. The spirit. Walk in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Be filled with the spirit. Yes. Are we obedient to his commands? If not, why? <clears throat> if not, why are we not obedient? If, you, if you've got some things that are going on, obviously we can say altars are open, but come back tonight because we're going to be dealing with more of this. Because we need to become obedient to the Spirit of God. Amen? What, maybe we should be singing some of this. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. <coughs> Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Would you all stand all over the house this morning? And let us pray together. Lord, don't let us, we pray, together. Don't let us go through our lives as your followers, not being filled with the Holy Spirit, not able to do what you have clearly called us, commissioned us, set us apart to do. We confess our faults, our weaknesses, our sin, in not asking for and submitting to the Holy Spirit. Set our hearts on fire to share Christ with all who we know. We pray the fruit of our lives will be many other people coming into a right relationship with Christ and his church. And everybody say amen. amen. Sister, I just thought of a song that I don't have to put up. I'll have to find it for tonight's service. I know Cheryl would remember it. I love you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Remember that? Yeah, we'll sing that tonight.
because I have wandered too long. How many of you right now say you've drifted? You've had, you've had times and seasons. You know, and what, you know when that happens quite often? You, you get set adrift quite often when you go through some things that are traumatic. You've suffered loss, or perhaps you're going through a hard time, and you start to drift. <clears throat> we need to find our center. Sometimes they say, well, I, you know, I need to gather my thoughts. Have you ever had to do that? Well, I'm finding my center. And when, let me encourage you, if you're doing that, rather than just gather your thoughts, the first thing to do is say, Holy Spirit, I need you now. Yes. Father in heaven, I'm going to pray for us right now, because I believe it applies. Father in heaven, we have drifted for far too long in our spiritual walk. And we know that we need a spiritual wake-up call. This morning, Lord, we pray by your grace that you would help us to awaken us from this spiritual slumber and turn any spiritual laziness and indifference that we may have shown towards you into a burning fire. Father, rekindle the smoking embers of our faith and hope. Fan the flame of my trust and my obedience to you, I pray. Uphold us, Lord, with your righteous hand and keep us ever looking to Jesus, who is both the author and the finisher of our faith. This we ask in his name, who died for us, so that we might live with him in glory. And the church all said, Amen. 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 God bless you. God keep you in his, in his favor. And may we have peace. Amen.